frenzy. 14,600 strong trying to help the Terps to knock off number one, North Carolina. North Carolina has the nation's most glittering record, 17-0, and a number one ranking to bring into Cole Fieldhouse tonight to face Maryland. But even with that 17-0 record, 4-0 in the conference, they haven't been able to shake the Blue Devils of Duke in the standings. And the ACC is on the verge of becoming a two-team race very early in the season. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dick Vitale. It's great to have you with us. Of all of the wonderful players who have ever come through the North Carolina program, Antoine Jameson is the only one who has ever made first-team All-ACC as a freshman and as a sophomore. That alone should tell you what a great player he is. And they've had a few fair players. A guy by the name of Mike Latour and Sam Perkins. You think about James Worthy. He's been sensational all year, shooting better than 60%. Mike, he really excels here in Maryland. He's averaging 30 points a game here on this floor. He's averaging against Maryland 24 points and nine rebounds. They have to find a way, Maryland, to neutralize him on the offensive board. For Maryland, Albina Akizi has improved by leaps and bounds in the last two years. Actually, he's gone from being a project to be a guy they count on inside. I'll tell you one thing, Mike, he has now become the best center in the ACC. He's become a dominant inside player, averaging 13 a game during a regular season, but the last four games, he's been dominant. 17 a game, eight rebounds a game. I can't hear myself think. It's Maryland, it's North Carolina, it's Patrick, and it's Vital. <laughs> Two years ago, North Carolina came in here ranked number one. Maryland knocked them off. The Terrapins hope history can repeat itself. Back. Cole Fieldhouse here are the starting lineups. First for the Tar Heels, having a brilliant year, Ed Cota leading the ACC in assists, and he has an assist to turnover ratio of nearly three to one. Bill Guthridge in his first year as the head coach, but hardly unfamiliar with the program, served 31 years as an assistant to the legendary Dean Smith. For Maryland, LaRon Profit, a major factor because of inconsistency. They need the kind of 18-point game he had against North Carolina State, not the one he had against Duke where he had no field goals. And Gary Williams knows a victory here tonight would put his club back in the top 25 as well as in the thick of the ACC race. I tell you, Mike, the psychology of coaching, Gary Williams threw away that video against Duke, and he showed the kids their win over Kansas. The question tonight is, Jekyll and Hyde, Maryland, which team will we see? The team that beat a Kansas team, the team that showed character to beat Florida State, or got blown out and humiliated here last week by Duke by 32. A Kesey jumping center against Carter. Stokes, very important players. Got to really neutralize at the point guard slot the play of Coda. Loose ball in the first turnover for Maryland. Here comes Coda on the run. He is a masterful ball handler. Jamison lost it. Turnovers even at one apiece. Well, the one thing out of the game, Maryland's got to get a good start with some confidence and to get this crowd really live and into it. Reset the shot clock after the ball was kicked. I'm pumped up. I have a feeling we're going to see something special here tonight in terms of a big time close game. The crowd certainly agrees with you. Five second call. They couldn't get the ball in bounds as Terrell Stokes, the trigger man from the baseline, couldn't find anybody. That's really not a way you want to handle a basketball on that side. Two possessions, two turnovers, and what a job Bill Guthrie just done. He'd be my midseason coach of the year. A-plus for the job he has done. I think he's the best story in college basketball, taking over for Dean Smith the way he has. Well, the legendary Hall of Famer, Dean Smith. They haven't missed a beat, as you see Mr. Jamison knocking down the wing jump shot. That's the shot Jamison hasn't had before this year, and some of the coaches said if he ever develops a 15-footer, we're all dead. Well, he's developed the 15-footer. Jamison with the miss, or excuse me, yes, it cabbages with the miss on the 15 foot. I'll tell you, Jameson, really an excellent transition player. Runs exceptionally well. Stokes pushes it up to Profit for three. They need the real Leron Profit, not the guy that you said earlier, Mike, who went 0 for 7 against Duke. Jump ball situation. Possession arrow will give it. 
to North Carolina. You know, Prophets had some big games against South Carolina. He had 24 points, 10 on the glass. Kansas, he had a big game. He can't go 0 for 7 and them have a chance to win. 2-0 early. Carolina with the basketball and the lead. Patience, ball control. The starters play predominantly all the minutes, North Carolina. Cotto with a three-point set shot. Very poised. You mentioned it a little bit earlier. Excellent distributor, the best in the conference in giving up the basketball. The zoning right now, changing defenses, multiple defenses, going to the 2-3 zone. Yes, Sakavish is really their best outside shooter, although Elliott is pretty good with range. Tries a 16-footer way off. Oh, no great right pass to Williams. Shaman Williams had it blocked by Profit. Profit did a great job recovering, but he had himself a layup. He nonchalanted it going to the basket. They're going to get a Keezy to basketball inside. He's got to get active and try to dominate in that lane. They're going to get him the ball down in the post. Profit does on the bounce pass against Jameson. Too strong. Perfect with the tip. That should lift his confidence. Profit going to the glass. Good offensive rebound. But they went inside. They've got to attack inside. Bring the ball to Akizu. Coda dumps it down inside for an easy bucket. Jamison catches it inside. Akizu can't check him inside, Mike. He's matched up playing him. That's an m and He's not quick enough to handle Jamison. Baseline drive. They tried to get it to Akizu. Turn it over again. Maryland having trouble holding on to the basketball. Jamison quickly the other way. And it's nine. Two. Got to get a quick timeout, Gary Williams. Got to get a T.O., baby. They're not getting back defensively. Shaman should have had a duck. Look at him right here. He's telling him, you guys are not getting back defensively. That's a no-no. That's Carolina in transition, and they catch the trailer. What a great job of trailing the play. I think Jamison right now, Mike, would automatically be the number one player in America. I think he is a lot to be player of the year. Last year was Tim Duncan, but I can't see him losing that, even though Paul Pierce is having a sensational year for Kansas. Right now, he's second in the ACC in both scoring and rebounding to Matt Harpering down at Georgia Tech. Let's see if the timeout did anything for the ball handling capabilities. A Keezy over Matt Hard John. See, that's where they got to go. They got to take advantage of his ability to post inside. He's become so agile. He and Nazi Muhammad over at Kentucky, the two most improved big players in America. Nine, four, five turnovers combined so far. And now they got Elliott checking. That's a better matchup. Elliott checking Jamison. Jamon Williams with a runner. Here comes Yessa Cavish is on the run. Profit got tangled up and went down, so they lost the numbers again. Elliott with a block by Jai. Jamison with a rebound. He lost it. Three on one. Profit takes it all the way and scores. Nice play right there by Profit to finalize against Maktar Jai in a three on one situation. Maktar's really improved inside, shooting 50%, giving him some steady play down in the post. Not sensational, but a solid role player. See, I think to be able to win national championships, you have to have three stars. You have to have players in three positions, and they have that at North Carolina with guys like Shaman Williams, Carter, and Jameson. Both, both teams have been warned about delaying play, and here's a rare bad pass by Ed Cota. And you can throw in a fourth star, Mr. Cota, and then two really solid role players in Okalaja and also in the play of Jai. Terrell Stokes, who had lost his starting job to Matt Kavari, got it back. Tough pass inside, tough shot by Akizi, and Jamison cleans the glass. You can see their philosophy and their game plan is to bring, bring the ball inside to Akizi. Four rebounds early for Jamison. He's hit three field goals as well. Jamon Williams got it down. Look how quick he is off his feet. They can't allow him to post up inside. You've got to beat him to the basketball. That's the first rule defensively. Ball, you, man. Beat the man to the ball. Jamison has taken four shots. He has eight points. Somebody better tell them that Jamison's a star. Somebody better tell him you can't just play him like a normal player. Profit. Too strong from the baseline. Elliott kept it alive. Here come the heels three on one. Coda. Shimon Williams, little fadeaway. 
I'm amazed how quickly they're getting out in transition, and the defensive transition for Maryland has been non-existent. 13-6. Change of defense is 2-3. Kesey again, double team, kicks it outside. Yes, it canvases for three. They need his three. He had 18 big ones against North Carolina State. Yes, the Cabbages can shoot the ball, but he's also improved in other areas on the floor. His passing, ball handling. Number five all time in threes made of Maryland. Carter with a tough lean in shot. Halfway down, came back out. He's got the great legs, Carter. Profit back the other way. LeRon Profit playing with a lot of confidence tonight. And that one's kicked out of bounds. It will be Maryland basketball with a fresh 35 on the shot clock when we come back. 14:36 to go, first half. 8-10, Xavier GW, great finish. Time winding down. GW gets the ball down low. They got two shots at it. And Mike King gets fouled with no time left. And only his third game this year. Just became eligible for the second semester. He drains both. We go to OT, and Xavier just converts a three-point play. They are up one. We'll keep you posted. 14.36 to go first half. Carolina leading Maryland by four. It's been the Antoine Jameson show so far. I think he's been a PT peer. We're going to take a look right up here how he gets free with that little circle move right here. Freeze it right here. See, here comes Jameson. Now he's going to post into this area here. They're going to bring him the ball, and nobody beats him to the spot. you got to beat the guy to the spot. See, now he's going to hook inside, and there's the little layup. I mean, that's automatic, Mike. I mean, that's a cardinal sin against a superstar like Jameson. Four out of four from the floor. He has five rebounds. Not a bad first five minutes for Antoine Jameson. He's not too bad minutes, I'll tell you that. No. He had seven in one minute against Virginia. This is Mardison's number 33, the red shirt freshman, right into a Kesey. And if there is any weakness in the North Carolina ball club, it's defensively at center. Well, I'll tell you right now, Obina has become such a solid post player inside. Maktar Jai with the jump hook and got the roll. I tell you, he's really improved, though, Mike. Last year, he was really struggling, but I think this year, he's an improved player inside, both offensively and defensively, but Abina has improved so much. 15-11, and it looks like Maryland has weathered that early storm. Tipped away. Coda couldn't get the steal. What an amazing run North Carolina's on, Mike. 33 of their last 34 wins. Their only loss to Arizona in a national championship. And Bill Guthridge, not bad for a rookie head coach, 17-0, number one. Not bad at all. Just imagine what Dean would have done with this team. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Wow. I miss Dean Smith, though. I'll tell you, you talk about class. He's going to work in television with CBS. Terrific. I wish he'd be with us. Stokes. Three. He's been up and down all year. Been really like that yo-yo up and down but they get solid play out of him played well against North Carolina State if Stokes and Profit play well this is a really good team well they can beat anybody if they play well those two guys Jai forced that Maryland with a chance to take the lead it's amazing you would think they're getting blown out here they're getting a chance to take the Profit knocked away by Jai Crowd wanted a goal tip Coda the other way and contact that'll be a foul on Yessa Kavishis I don't believe there was goaltending on that play. I thought that was a legitimate block, Mike. I think he got that ball on its upward flight, not on its downward flight. I know the people, home crowd, wants it to go the other way. We're going to see the drive right here. See, I think he got that ball going up. It's close. It's close. But I that think is, he's got it. That's such a tough call to make. Yeah, that one there was very tough. Let's look at Jamison. Antoine Jamison. Awesome Antoine. Yes, Akavishus picks up the personal foul. That is the first foul in the ball game. With the 13-12 one. That's amazing. Jameson being guarded outside by Martisic. Martisic not quick enough to handle Jameson. But so far he's played pretty good position to keep him away from the easy layup. Position defense so important against a guy like Jameson. You've got to beat him to the spot on the floor. You've got to contain him. You can't let him catch the ball inside. He just explodes off the floor. This is Coda. Jameson goes out high. Carter on the wing. Carter has played exceptionally well this year. He's been quiet here tonight, only because Jameson has been so stupid. The long range jumper won't go. Fight for the rebound. It'll go the other way. Carter could not hit the three. 
With a college basketball conference season underway, no time like the present to order ESPN's full court college basketball pay per view. Great conference action from all the major conferences the ACC, SEC, Big Ten, to name just a few. Call Direct TV or your local cable company for more information if you are the ultimate fan. In sports basketball jump. I think you bought me that for a prize. A nice gift. <laughs> You don't have it already? <laughs> but you had every game conceivable. <laughs> wow, look at Duke and that blowout. Only by 36 on the road. At White, 36. Kansas still rolling without Rafe LaFrance. I think they're going to be better when he comes back. That was a great learning situation for guys like Chenoweth and Lester Earl. When we get LaFrance back, they're going to go up even another notch. Akizi gets a nice round of applause as he goes out, and Elliott comes back, 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 back here. Akizi did a heck of a job inside. The game plan was to go to him, but he took advantage early. Yes, the Cavishes to Elliott. Had the shot passed on it, then takes it and rims it out. Yeah, he hesitated. He should not have hesitated. He should have shot that quicker. Knocked down three early in the first half against Kansas when he upset the Jayhawks. Jameson, wow. and he looks over wow. here. I talked to him before the game. I said, you really worked hard on the 15-footer, didn't you, and free throws? He said, yes, I did. Well, that's his third three he's made this year. The rap on him has always been that if you could push him out and get him away from the basket, he can't score. His stock is just going up, up, and up, like just like your stock. That's a remarkable guy. Profit answers with a three. Well, it looks and like LaRon Profit having a tremendous game. He has seven points early. And he's playing good defense on Carter. I don't believe Carter scored yet. No, he's done a great job on it. Profit really into it tonight. Hey, remember against Duke, though. Duke knocked down seven of first 11 threes against Maryland. Rodney Elliott picks up a foul away from the ball. We have a timeout. 11.39 to go first half. Number one, Carolina by a point. 11 to 5 run in the last three and a half minutes. They closed the gap to one, Mr. Vitale. Well, we talked about in 1995, they came in here number one in America, North Carolina. At that time, as you said, Bill Guthridge was sitting next to the Hall of Famer, Dean Smith, and Joe Smith was sensational at was 14 points, 16 rebounds, and Maryland got the big W over North Carolina. Take a look at these guys. They were all right there. Wow. First-year coaches went to number one. Bill Hodges, where is he today? Remember, he coached a guy by the yeah. name of Larry Bird. Only six men have ever done it. And there's only been one better start by a rookie head coach in the history of North Carolina. And you have to go back to 1924 to find out a guy named Norman Shepard. You know, Mike, also North Carolina was number one in the nation when they lost to Maryland at the Dean Dome in the Lenny first game Bias. ever at the Dean Dome. Lenny Bias and left-handed Giselle and company. Bias, I feel, was the closest thing I ever saw to a wonderful player. Tough pass. Somehow it got through to the big freshman, Brendan Haywood. And he turned it over. Turnover inside. North Carolina is trying to find a little bit more bench help. But as Bill Guthridge told us tonight, he's talking to you and I. He said, hey, I'm not worried about that. As long as I got my players and they're healthy and they're ready to play, you only put five on the floor. There's the backdoor lob, and Maryland will take the lead. Great nice look. pass to Terrence Morris, and this kid is going to be a player. Yeah, he's got great size, explosiveness. I tell you, he did a great job when he came in defensively against NC State. They were behind. They played him up to the top of the point, and that's where he is right now, number 44. Kick it outside to Okalaja. He misses the throw. Maryland on the run. Yes, the Cavishes. Morris can really run. He's got great elevation. I tell you, we're going to have a dandy one here tonight. This place is ready to really rock and roll. Do you know when this game turned around, Dick, is when Martisic came in the ballgame. His defense inside has been really tough. Yeah, he did a solid job. Team's having a tough time. This will be a foul on Morris as he went for the loose ball, got Jamison instead. Jamison really gets bumped a lot as you look at Gary Williams. Now we're going to watch Morris right here. They're going to look over the top, freeze it right here. He's going to catch this baby up here and jam City on that pass. Jam City. There it is. Look at those legs. He jumps like you do, Mike. He's got that great elevation. You look at me with that smile. Who, me? I couldn't get over a telephone call. <laughs> <laughs> you compliment me far too much. 
done a great job so far on Porter. Not on the floor right now, but they've done a great job neutralizing him. Jamison is really the only guy that's hurt them big time so far. See, they're using Morris now. They use him at the top of that zone, number 44. See the big guy right up here? He's playing the top of the zone. Oh, Elijah with some range goes baseline. Morris got in his face, forced him to change the arc on him. See, they play that 1 2 2 zone, and they use him up on top, and he really bothered the shooters of North Carolina State when they came from behind, other than Harrison, who was on fire. Rafa. Knocked out of bounds to the heels with 9.39 to go in the half. Gary Williams constantly intense on that sideline. Worked as a soccer coach. Would you really believe that? To be an assistant at Lafayette, he became a soccer coach, and he told me, I didn't know anything about soccer. <laughs> That's how badly he wanted a coach on him. Look where he ended up. Yeah. See Morris now number 44 plays the point. He's got the long arms. He's 6 8. And he takes away any perimeter jump shot. And he slides inside. Javon Williams from long range. It's an air ball. And all of a sudden, North Carolina can't do anything offensively. And you're right, Dick. That zone's made a big difference. Here's Martisic. Turnaround jumper. Too strong. Elliott. Got it. And the foul. Rodney Elliott having a heck of a year this year. Last year, he was an all roll A. A guy coming off the bench and giving him some relief. Way behind you, Moose. This year he has become a starter. Has had some big, big moments in a turf uniform. As Martisic now inside taking a little jump shot. And there's the offensive rebound. Dick, he is very, very aggressive tonight. Speaking of Martisic. Maryland now on a 15-5 run. They have a three-point lead. Elliott from out of Dunbar, he pointed out in Baltimore's produced so many great players. Getting Keith Booth and getting into Baltimore was a big, big break and a great opportunity for Gary Williams. Maryland's lead extends to four. Carter back on the floor now. They're going to get Vince Carter involved. He's too talented, multi-dimensional, number 15. He's an acrobatic guy on a baseline. As a zone now, playing that zone, number 44 up on top. Defense has made a difference. There's Carter. Nice pass to Jai. Triple team to baseline. And he's fouled. Trying to run that little high-low offense. Foul on Elliott was his second. That's the fourth on the Terps. See, now we're going to watch them rotate over to the foul line and try and get a little high-low here. Trying to dump the ball inside. Trying to get a little high-low entry. There it is, the dump down. I got to convert on the line. It has been a tortured route for Maktar Jai. First, he enrolled at Lake Forest. Eligibility questions wouldn't let him play there. He went to Michigan for two years and then came to North Carolina. Loves it at North Carolina, but I told him today, you were there when I was teasing him. I said, Maktar, Professor, Professor Jai, please. He gave his team. He said, we get a C for our performance thus far. I said, if you're laying C's out, I don't want to ever take you in one of one of your classes. I mean, are you kidding me? They're 17 and 0. If they don't get an A, who's going to get an A? He's already scored more points so far this year than he did all of last season. The lead back to two. Got to try to get some wing jump shots against that zone. Swing the ball side to side, use the skip pass. Trying to overload on one side, get four against three. Morris and Martis have dropped the bench. have given Gary Williams some high quality minutes. Nearly a steal here. Good save by Morris as part of their hand. Well, shot clock's down to seven. Gary felt that's one of their strengths this year. A teaser. I'll tell you, that's one of their strengths. The big fella, Little Jam City, Obina Akizi. Akizi has six to lead back to four. He has, without a doubt now, the best center in the ACC. Elton Brand, I thought, would have been had he not got in. This zone has really done its job. Yes, with 44 up on top, you can't get any looks from up on top. Shooting the jump shot. Jamison over Martisic. Jai had a hand on it. Martisic with a rebound. This young man is going to earn himself a lot of playing time. They've really quieted down Jamison now. Profit. Oh, oh impossible bro. shot. They're totally out of control right there. That quiet is the crowd. Here's the lob. Holy cow, Carter. Are you kidding? That's what we talked about, his ability on the baseline. He's very acrobatic. He's got the great legs, the great bounce, but that's also created by the great look and pass. Looks so much like Grant Hill and the incredible slam he had for Duke a couple of years ago. Yeah, the NCAA tournament. 
Vince Carter's got that gift. I mean, he can absolutely skywalker, a high riser, an elevator man. Morris throws that one away. 7-15 to go in the first half. The lead is back to two. Spectacular plays at each end of the court. Mike King, two free throws with no time left, forced it in overtime, and then King in overtime. He hits this shot. Shante Rogers adds 25. Good win for Mike Jarvis's GW team. Mike and Dick. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale, our entire ESPN crew. Glad you could join us. It's been a beauty so far from Maryland, where the Terps are on top of number one North Carolina. Well, Mike, we thought that Akizi would be a dominant player on the inside, and he hasn't disappointed early. There he is with Jam City. But when you talk about jams, take a look at this 747 flying through the sky. I mean, that's up, up, and away, baby, Mr. Carter. There was no 747. That was a Learjet. Learjet, baby. <laughs> North Carolina's hit only one of its last five field goals. That was the dunk by Carter. Gary Williams goes to a little three-quarter press. A little trap. See, I don't think he can trap this club. I think they'll find the open man and make you pay, just like Duke does. Well, Elijah had a clean pass on him just inside the line. He hits the shot and draws the foul. Adam Ola, one of the, I call him the intangible man. He does all the little intangibles that lead to winning. He'll screen, he'll make the extra pass, play on a defensive end. And you have to have role players, Mike. You can't have all stars. Terrell Stokes got the last personal. That's the fifth team foul against Maryland. You know, everybody talks about death, including yours truly. But in 1995, they went to the Final Four, and they lined up and played predominantly five guys. That was Stackhouse, and they played McGinnis, and played Wallace, and Donald Williams, and Dante Calabria. Oak Elijah with a three-point play gives North Carolina the lead back at 25-24. They're back in that 2-3 zone. Make the extra pass. Got over. We'll get the seed. They missed Martisic. Right in the a seed. I'll tell you, beautiful give and go. Mike, that kid has become a star. He's getting better and better and better with every performance. Remember that name, people. He's going to play at the next level. Ovina Akizi. There's no doubt about it. Akizi has eight points in his last four games. He's averaged nearly 17 a game. See that a play of up on top. Number three in that zone. Carter couldn't get three on the lob this time. Cross-court pass, Shaman Williams. That was passed by Shaman. Maktar Jai shows some range. Maktar Jai is playing much better. He's got more confidence this year in his role. Profit quickly back the other way. Martisic still in there. He's played very, very well. I think lost one player, key player from last year, serves Swicky. Six out of seven returns from that club. They went to the final four. Amazing run after going 0-3 to start the conference last year. It was frightening at the beginning of the year for them, but Dean Smith found a way to turn it around. Well, when does it ever find a way? <laughs> never did. And Akizi is fouled. Dean never failed to find the right way. Tuesday night through Saturday, ESPN2, your choice for the ultimate NBA breakdown. The NBA Tonight, all the highlights from around the league as well as analysis of the players and the playbooks. That's the NBA Tonight. Tuesday through Saturday, midnight Eastern only on ESPN2. I tell you, Keezy's a guy that's really improved on that free throw line as well. Got him for an illegal screen on the inside. Aldini Akizi with a moving screen. He had so much trouble with fouls last year, but has really done a much better job. And it's almost like a virus. Rodney Elliott caught it this year. Yeah, Elliott's fouled out of five games. You're right, Mike, right on top of it. Here's number three now. Profit playing the top of the zone. Give me another foul away from the ball. A hole. Shalon Williams has been awfully quiet. He's had a sensational year this year. That's on a Keezy, so he gets two in about eight seconds. Well, see, that becomes big because now he picks up his third. You lose your advantage in the lane, and that's where they got a strong advantage. Now, here's Amina inside. Trying to hold Carter. You can see oh, the jersey oh. come back. I don't know about that call, Mike. Well, it's not the NFL. It's not pass interference. I mean, there's Carter going to the line. Explosive. You know, you talk about also, I'm just thinking here, 1982, remember they won the national title? They only played five guys basically there. Jimmy Black, Matt Doherty, and the big three, Perkins, Worthy, and Jordan. 
good free throw. There's a lot of ways to get it done. Carolina by three, 5.17 to go. Stokes. And the bottom line, you're right, Mike, just get it done. Nine to two run right now. It's been a game of streaks for each ball club. Akizi wide open, a little penetration against Jamison. Somehow he got it up and in. I think he's agile, mobile, and I'll tell you one thing, he's not fragile. You always forget hostile. Yeah. <laughs> it's the other part of the triumvirate. There's that zone. There's that zone. It's been their most effective defense so far tonight. Yeah, really, because they can't handle Jameson one-on-one. -on -one. Cota wide open for a three, and he missed it. Two Maryland players down. Are they going to call timeout? Nikesey is hurt. Hit his head as he fell on the court. Just a great young man, super student as well, Mike. In a day and age where we see so much in a way of greed and players out there not handling responsibilities well, Obina Ikezi is an outstanding student. Gary Williams was really complaining that he was pushed. Let's take a look. Obina, number 54. Well, he, goes yeah, he just fell down. No, he, just, he got kicked accidentally. Accidentally. Well, you can't call a foul on that. He just no, fell down. He just went to the death. Jameson just hustled play. Well, it looked like a knee in the back of the back head. Ahead. He's up. Soccer player. That's why he's so agile. He's got great footwork. Played soccer. Got a chance to meet his idol. Told me his idol is Akiva Lajol. Tell you what, if you're a kid out playing soccer and Obina Akizi shows up at 6 <laughs> 56, you're going to want to pick another sport. <laughs> They're not supposed to make him that big. He's so agile. Maryland. Maryland with a chance to regain the lead. As Martison trying to post inside. The Maryland zone has done a great job of keeping the ball away. As Elliott knocks down another trifecta. That time he hesitated, set himself again, and made the shot. Well, he made three big ones in the first half and a win over Kansas. See, this zone has really kept the ball away from Jamison. See, they're alert. They know where Jamison is on the floor. Jamison and Elliott really working against each other. Shaman Williams with the three. He can, he can be a deadly outside shooter. I was just going to say, Mike, he can flat out shoot the rock. There's no doubt about it. He's got 28 in a row now on a free throw line for this game. Profit got away from Carter, dumps it off inside. No basket for the foul as Elliott goes to the bucket, and it looked like Carter got it. You know, Maryland would really, I think, be way up there in the polls had they not lost two heartbreakers early in the year. They lost to South Carolina in overtime and to Clemson in overtime. And we're going to watch them right now, taking the ball to the gun of the defense. Takes it down, dumps it down inside, and there's the contact. You know, they lost to Clemson, and they had Clemson at the time, Terrell McIntyre. They're a different club when McIntyre's on the floor. I'm looking forward to Saturday on ABC. Clemson against Duke at Duke because Clemson's coming off a big 20-point blowout over Florida State. Look at the numbers here. And from a guy coming off the bench to the starter's role and has been sensational. Heads up, heads up. What a comes from Dunbar when it so many players, Mike, over the years. This free throw, Kavara kept it alive, saved by Profit, but right to Coda. What a huge sells in transition, making a great decision. He's having a marvelous year. Now they get it to Jameson, Profit from behind. See, that's Profit coming from the top of that zone, rotating down low on the All-American, Mr. Jameson. He says, hey, wait a minute, don't you know an All-American? They're going head-to-head, 32-32, Maryland and North Carolina with 3.43 to go, first half. There's any doubt in this ball game so far? Maryland switching to a zone has been the big thing, Dick. They've done a great job with their zone defense. So it starts out like in a 1-2-2 two, two alignment, and it moves obviously with the movement of the basketball. Watch this right here. Freeze it right here. See, Profit starts up on top, and then they got their zone in this. But here's the guy they're going to try to go to Jamison here, but he's going to rotate down, and he's going to create the problem. Now watch this by Profit number three. Jamison's going to get it. See now. Shaman Williams misses the three. There's a foul underneath as they try to go for the rebound. It looked like Kovarik got a piece of the shot original. Profit rotated down in that sequence. It came down and 
We had a problem with Jameson, as you've seen. The foul right here. I got you. Antoine Jameson having a big time year. Average 30. Remember the game here two years ago, 86 86. Calabria throws it up in the air, and he's on the floor, and he tips it in. I oh, know Calabria was on the floor, flips it up, Remarkable. and Jameson tips it in at the buzzer to beat Maryland. It was unbelievable. Jameson, 12 points, six boards, five out of seven field goals so far. He would have had a phenomenal night. He throws, he still may have it, but he would have had an unbelievable night if they tried to check him man to man, which they couldn't handle. North Carolina hit all seven of its free throw tries in the first half. It's 34 32. Plus, shooting better than 70% as a team, excelling better than 50% offensively. And that's the reason you're 17 0. You take care of all areas, all the special situations. McKeezy getting a break right now, and Doug Gary Williams would like to avoid getting that third foul on him. Tough pass to Profit. Yeah, the reason he liked that because they can't handle him. They have not shown they can handle the pieces. Profit over Shaman Williams. A little showtime for Leron Profit. Yeah, a little shake and bake. And he's come out here focused tonight. He really has. He is having a big game. Nine points for Leron Profit. I like Morris up on top of that zone, number 44. He's got the long arms, the wingspan of a 747, and you can't shoot over the top of him. Jamison out of the corner. His game is complete. Look out. I'll tell you one thing, Mike. He's going to be a sensational player at the next level with his quickness, his work ethic, and his attitude, his basketball IQ. He's got the whole package. He loves to play here. Two games at Cole Fieldhouse. Antoine Jamison has averaged 30. He has 16 in the first half tonight and that's not against Cupcake City Morris tried to get a job got a piece of it back up good job in that lane shot clock did not recycle the follow shot by Martisic with one on the shot clock Martisic doing a good job off the bench they're getting some play out of Morris the Warwick and Martisic off the bench Jameson forced it up Martisic with a rebound He's got three boards in this game. And most of all, he's given some QT quality time with Bikisi on the sideline. And he really looks forward. Maryland will take the lead as Morris goes bombs away. They're waiting for that diaper dandy to explode. He's come in with all kinds of labels of potential. It's been quiet. Maryland has hit five out of nine from beyond the arc. This place is really going bananas here, baby. 14,600 on their feet. Coda rushed it and missed. Martisic with another rebound by the inside. Dick, I told you in the break, I'd never let Martisic leave the floor. He played great. He really has a nice screen. He just played Morris. Give him the ball. Watch the ball low. Oh, what a great play. Play. And foul by Mac Tarjai. Holy cow, is this kid having a hand? Tell you one thing, their coaching staff, Billy Hahn and that whole group, Dickerson and Gary Williams, do a great job teaching big man moves because you can see the ball fake. Now take a look right here. We're going to watch Martisic with the great ball fake. See the ball fake and the head fake? Oh, Mactor, you left something on the floor. You left something on the floor. Mactar Jai just picked up his third personal foul. How good has Carolina been so far this year? Their average lead at the half, almost 13 points. And right now, Maryland bidding to go into the locker room with the lead. Well, you know, when you look at North Carolina, and you look at a team that doesn't go to its bench. They get 90% of the score, and as the crowd roars, the bar is coming off the floor, and 75% of the rebounding. One of the ways to really, really try to beat them is to make them have to go to their bench by getting people Absolutely. to follow But no one hit the line. Maryland's first seven-footer. Got a nice touch. That again, the four, nearly six points a game. The lead's four. Now, Mike, they're going to some full court pressure and back away. See, not trapping. I think that's a smart decision. Against Duke, they tried to trap all over, and Duke just buried them. They trapped the shot. Them. Yeah, because when you trap, you don't have to be a genius to know. Two on one, you got an open guy. And too many of those guys from Duke can move the ball and shoot it. So can these kids at North Carolina. Great move by Gary Williams to go to this defense. Shot clock at eight. The crowd on its feet. Coda kicks it out. Oak Elijah. 
playing with a lot of confidence. Great adjustment by Gary Williams. He did that against NC State. They were down one. He went to the 1-2-2 zone with Morris, and it changed the game. This place is erupted, Mike. It's erupted. Now they'll play for the last shot already up by four. What a first half for the Terrible. And it looked like they were going to get blown out the way it started. It did. Until he made one little simple adjustment. Stokes to Martisic. Missed that one badly. Maryland on a 7 nothing run to take a four-point halftime lead. That's our story from College Park. Let's go to the studio and Carl Ravitch. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the 1998 Pontiac Bonneville. Luxury with attitude. Welcome back to Cole Fieldhouse in College Park. Maryland leading North Carolina 41-37 at the half. Glad to have you with us, everybody. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale. It isn't very often we can sit here at halftime and talk about a coach's decision to change defenses that has such a dramatic impact on a ball game. But certainly, Gary Williams gets the upper hand for strategy so far. Well, I tell you, that adjustment he made really helped them big time because they couldn't handle Antoine Jameson. He came out of the gate, looked like he was going to get 50. But then they decided to go to the zone. And we take a look at the zone, and they played a big guy up on top, Mr. Morris, and then he'll slide into this area. Watch the big guy at 6'8 with the long arms and the wingspans. He follows the ball, and he covers the whole three-second area. We're going to watch him right here. Here he is going to slide down inside. Freezer right here. See, right here. He's into this area here. Now they're going to force him to take the jumper here. There it is right now. Watch Morris on the inside. 44. Did a great job. I also thought that Quinn Buckner was accurate in the studio talking about the patience that they had offensively as well as we look at the stats. Maryland did a great job in the first half. Maryland shooting 52%. Only three teams in the last two years have shot better than 50% against North Carolina. Look at the second chance point. That has been something North Carolina over the years has done brilliantly. Maryland outscoring them 7 to nothing. The other key about Gary Williams' switch to that zone, Jamison had 16 points in the first half but he went 826 without scoring against the zone defense well they had a tough time finding the basketball and getting the ball to him the bottom line is guys like Williams now Shimon Williams who has two for six and a guy like Vince Carter with that great ability was only one for three have to find some shots and get involved offensively well, Kalaja had the three and passed on it well, Kesey spent a lot of time late in the first half on the bench with two personals. He yeah. starts the second half. There's See, Jamison. Can't check him, Mike. No. Got to come out of that man to man. Cannot check him. That's a total mismatch. It's an M and Ever. And plus, you're in danger of him getting three. So now going to try and make Jamison check with Peter. Akizi fouled by Okalija. I tell you, I really love to see a player develop the way he has, the way a guy like Nazi Muhammad has, AJ Bramlett down in Arizona. Love to see kids that aren't spoiled by the system, big-time recruits who come in with a big head. Look at that nice spin move. Look at a great baseline spin, the drop step. I tell you, great seeing Quinn Butler in that studio, one of my favorites when he played on the college oh, level. Absolutely. Last unbeaten team, 1976. Talk about that club with Benson. That great Scott May. What a club they have. You know, one, one of the great things about Akizi, Dick, is that he chose Maryland because of its academic reputation and the engineering courses and, and that kind of thing that he wanted to take. And look at how he has progressed. His numbers a raw indicator of it. He's both free throws to lead back to four. That's what we were talking about a little bit earlier about he's an outstanding student as well as an athlete, not an athlete student. Had it in perspective, like Mr. Buckner did when he played for Bob Knight in Indiana. Jamon Williams goes right by Profit. Little pull-up jumper. Can't hit it. The rebound goes to Profit. That's a good decision by Shimon, though. He's got to get involved. I love him. I think he's one of the most underappreciated stars in America. Profit, an off-balance jumper. Tough shot. Got to give Vince Carter a few touches now. Got to give Carter some touches. Carter kicks it back outside for the three, and Okalija knocks it down. There's the big role player, the intangible guy, making the big play when they need it, making that big shot. Always one of Dean Smith's favorites, Adamola. 
Ukalaja. He has six. The lead is back to one. Elliott to Akizia against Jamison. Spins. Back to Elliott. Great two-man game. What a nice little interior pass along the baseline. I haven't seen many big people with his footwork that I've seen over the years, Mike. Elliott just got away with a forearm of the chest of Jamison. Really thrilled it. Yeah, Jamison takes a pounding out there. The price of this would be the superstar. North Carolina trying to show that poise and patience. Carter a little fade away and hit it. That's the guy that's got to get involved. He's got to get into the flow offensively, a little isolation. Carter, who averages 16-1, has only six in this game. Well, he had three shots at halftime. Uh, going eight. Their game plan is to go to this big guy. It's easy. Follows his own miss. Can't handle the big fella. The big fella's owning the lane inside. It's my world tonight. He'll be the same. It's my world, baby. Get me the rock. 14 points for the junior from Nigeria. What a great ACC game. The best conference in America. Carter, showtime. As Mr. Carter stepping it up. He's got that little strut. He's got that slide. He knows he's special. In high school, one game, he blocked 17 shots. The guy has serious hops. He broke the hearts of the people at Florida State, Florida, and Duke. They were right in the hunt for him. But he said yes to Mr. Smith. Profit in the lane. Partially blocked. Great defense that time by Carter. He has and that's why he's got more playing time the last two. You just beat me to the bus. He has really improved defensively. Coda, no basket foul before the shot. A break for Maryland. That was one area when he started out as a diaper dandy in North Carolina. Didn't get a whole lot of playing time until he received a message loud and clear from Dean Smith to wear a North Carolina uniform and to get PT. You're going to play on a defensive end. Foul on Stokes was his second. I think it's amazing that you see the numbers they're posting. 33 of their last 34 games. They're only lost to Arizona in the national championship. Unbelievable. I mean, in the semifinals of the final four. Carter spun out on it. Well, what a quick leaper. He and Jamison get off the floor as fast as anyone. Crockett a little out of control again, throws it away. William Stokes can't stop it. Come on in transition. The other thing they have going for them, Mike, is they got beautiful music and beautiful chemistry. They all are very unselfish. They love playing with each other, and they have pride in that uniform they wear. The eighth lead change in the ball game. Akizi right by Mac Tarjai. He's using the guy in the lane. And what about the left hand? He utilized the left hand. He goes right, he goes left. What a show he's putting out tonight. You see the coming of a superstar, my friend. Seven out of ten field goals, 16 points. What a ball game. Jameson with a little baseline jump for the lead changes again. He gets that shot off so quick. I can't remember a player on a collegiate level who had a quicker release than Jameson over the years on a baseline. Dick, this is why people love ACC basketball. Elliott, both teams on fire. We're seeing great offensive efficiency. Both clubs getting good ball movement, player movement. Oh, listen to this place. The cold field house is rocking. They're rocking at Route 1. I bet he's baby right now. Back to man to man. Look out for Jameson and Carter. Williams against Jesse Cavis. Nice dish. Jameson. You go to man to man. To man, to man. Just count it. Put it in a book, Mr. Patrick. I know you're working on your numbers. Put it in a book. Every possession if they play a man to man. Antoine Jameson has 22. Elliott for three. Akizi tried to keep it alive, instead commits his third foul over the back. Bartosic has got to come in. See, that's where he loses a lot of minutes, Amina. And that's an area he's got to really, really work on. He's got to stay on the floor and stay out of foul trouble. North Carolina, because of Abina, Akizi scrapping to hold on to number one. North Carolina has regained the lead. They've shot seven out of nine from the floor in the second half. Obina Akizi at the 15-04 mark has to go to the bench with his third foul. We're going to watch him post up right here. Now we're going to see him post. Now watch his drop step to the baseline. And then he's going to dump it off right to his teammate with a good catch. Rodney Elliott in the lane. Obina really playing superbly tonight. There he is with that agility and a second effort, tenacious, using that big, big wide body. Now look at him using the left hand. 
after a nice move to the goal. Obina Aguizzi sitting on the side. Looks like a heavyweight champ. I mean, he looks like a heavyweight champ sitting there with the towel around him. Well, it's 6'10", 256, who knows? Hey, maybe we'll put him in a ring with Evander. He and Evander hook it up. And I bet he wouldn't bite him. Well, you wouldn't want to put him in with Tyson. He has two good ears. 52-51, <laughs> Tar Heels by one. Half-court trap with Morris up on top. He looked, oh, he almost had that steal. Should have stepped in the lane. And this is the part that really bothered North Carolina. One, two, two show with Morris at 6'8", with those long arms up on top. Got it into Jameson, a little jump hook. Doesn't he miss, Mike? Doesn't no. the kid miss? He's like automatic. He's like absolutely automatic. Jameson, number two in the ACC in field goal percentage, 61%. Today, he's hit 10 out of 13. So beautiful to know that he came back to school. He raped for friends, Paul peers, saying no to the NBA and enjoying their collegiate days. Oh, Elijah for three, and Carolina with a burst here, they're up 57-51. Good 22nd timeout. Okalaja has made three big baskets in this game. Three big baskets. You know, they went 32-0 in 1957 under Frank McGuire. And two other times, they won 21 in a row before being beaten. One time in 84, lost to Eddie Sutton in Arkansas. And in 86, they lost to Virginia after winning 21 in a row. North Carolina. Wouldn't you agree? Here's the field goal story in the second half, 82%. Wouldn't wow. you agree, Dick, now with the balance in college basketball that we're never going to see those undefeated seasons again? Exactly. I think it's too difficult today, as you say, Mike, the balance across America, everybody getting a chance to recruit the blue chip player. And what really happens with a school like North Carolina and Duke, and over the years, the Indianas and the Kentuckys, people play at such another level. Oh, well, that's poor defense right there by North Carolina. No one rotated over to give any kind of help on Stokes in an isolation. Nice drive by Stokes, goaltending on Jamison. The lead cut to four. Well, this is the kind of burst that Maryland weathered at the start of the game. Yeah, I think what we saw last year was almost miraculous. Kansas only losing two games. Oh, absolutely. Roy Williams, former Carolina. His son on the sideline here, Scott. Sits the bench for North Carolina. Walk out. There's Morris. I love this decision, Gary. We didn't see this against Duke. No. All we saw against Duke was the Blue Devils making three point shots. Yeah, we saw Maryland taking the ball out of the deck. Stunned. Jameson. No basket, but he got the foul. He can't believe it. He said, that didn't go in. Don't they know I'm awesome, Antoine? Don't they know I'm awesome, Antoine? That's supposed to fall down. Get him out of Charlotte, North Carolina. See, we're going to watch him right now in the lane, right here. He's going to step up. Freeze it. Right here. See how he's operating here? Now, somebody's got to try to match on this guy. They can't let him catch the ball in that area. They can't let him catch the ball in there. He got his mercy once he gets it in that lane area. Antoine Jameson in the last seven games has shot nearly 80% from the free throw line. Only a year ago he shot 62%. Was really a liability at the line all of his career. But he worked so hard this summer on shooting the ball outside of 15 feet and shooting free throws. Hundreds of them. And boy, it's paid off. Plays that big talent there. They get so many players like that in North Carolina that really have the basketball IQ and the character as well as the great talent. Jameson is it all four from the line today. A little strong for Martisic. Somehow he got it back in and put it up and in. He's having a nice game off that bench, giving him quality minutes, but he'll be out of the day. Martisic has six points and five rebounds. Turnover right there. 13-13 to go in the game. It's a four-point contest. They found Adam Ola over in Germany. He played with Henrik Rodel, former player at North Carolina. Hey, if you can play today, they'll find you. I'll tell you right, they'll find you. There's that two-three zone now by North Carolina. They can shoot over the top of it. And they're going up. Oh, what a pass by Martisic. Then the shot hits the underneath of the backboard. They lost control of his good high-low entry, but he lost control. Martisic looks like a senior the way he's playing. Carter with a miss. Oh, Kalijah, or excuse me, uh, Akizi back in the game gets the rebound. Playing the two big kids together. Playing Martisic and Okizi together, Mike. Getting a lot of size out there. Elliott's out of there because he has three fouls. He's fouled out of five games. And he can't afford to lose a quality guy like Elliott. Stokes calls out the play with 16 on the shot clock. He'll take it himself. Jameson with another rebound. 11 boards for Antoine Jameson. 
Maryland. That one's tipped away off of North Carolina. No, off of Maryland. And Gary Williams livid about the call. Gary Williams back at his alma mater told me that in 1989, had he known as we see the ball deflected right there, that's a good call. Came off of Martisic's knee yeah, and between the legs of McTar Jai. You know, he told me that. Had he known they were going to go on probation the way they did, he would not have come back to his alma mater. He had just recruited Mr. Jackson down here and Jimmy Jackson at Ohio State. He said he going to stay. Really had to struggle to rebuild the program. But he did it. So Smith and company arrived and they were on their way. And hoping for one of his biggest moments right here. Jai in the lane. Don't turn around. Jumper. He's really improved, Mike. I'm telling you, he was a non-factor inside. Now he can catch the ball and score that lane. Confidence level is a lot better. See, they're bringing Obino away. I would bring Obino right inside. I'd make them have to try to stop him. Get him the ball and let him try to stop him. They haven't stopped the ball all night. The lead back to six. Akizi into the line. Called for a travel. Maryland starting to make some of the mistakes they didn't make most of the game. They're down by six with 11.40 to go. The number one team in the country, the Heels of North Carolina, lead Maryland 61-55 in a game that is seesawed back and forth. Antoine Jamison has been the ACC Player of the Week eight times in his career. Only Tim Duncan and David Thompson have ever been named more. At Cole Fieldhouse, he has averaged 30 points a game. Tonight, 26 points, 10 out of 13 from the floor. He's just a remarkable player. Those baskets are like the Atlantic Ocean to them. I mean, it's unbelievable. They're like a teacup. You mentioned David Thompson, the greatest small forward I've ever watched on a collegiate level. I'm not talking professional on a collegiate level. He had a legitimate 44 inch vertical jump. Jai goes for the rebound. Nice job to tip it out to Coda. Dangerous pass to Carter there. Profit is back in. Shaman not getting some good looks at the basket. He's such a marvelous shooter, number three. Shaman Williams. Coda's got to find a way to create some opportunities, break that defense down, and get him some looks at the goal. The zone has done its job. They match it up. They've scouted him well. I mean, they know these teams inside out in terms of the intricacies. Referees in play. play because yeah. it hit the official. Yeah, referees in play. He's part of the action. Maryland's got to watch for a North Carolina spurt. They got to come back and get a little spurt in their own right here. Very dangerous time here. I mean, Mike, you realize the ACC has won five national championships in the last 16 years. They did it with Jordan in 82, then Jimmy V in 83 with NC State. Then you had Carolina winning. You had Carolina winning in 93, and you had 91 and 92. You had Duke. Duke back to back. Also, the last 10 years, the ACC has had at least one team in a Final Four with the exception of 96. That was the only year they didn't have anybody there. That's what Kentucky won it all. It's been absolutely remarkable. Morris had that ball kicked out of bounds by Carter. I tell you, people wonder where we get all these little tidbits. I have to admit it, Chucky Walsh is unbelievable. The SID here down at Maryland does an unbelievable job, as most SIDs do across America. They work in a situation to help guys like you and me. He's wonderful. I mean, no, so is Kirsten down there. Drop him with a three, way short. Around Profit Stone Cold in the second half. He had a very good first hit. Very dangerous time right now. Maryland's got to come up with a few stops. This club is very poised, and they know how to win. And, Mike, they were down 11 late in the game against Georgia. Seven with less than two minutes, and you would have thought Dean Smith was on the sideline. Bill Guthridge wheeled his own magic. Maryland has scored only four points in more than five minutes. Here's the steal by Profit. He's got a big CC steals leader. Into the lane with a right hand. That's a big play. That is a big play. That's the kind of play he has got to give them. He has that kind of potential and capability. Now he's crying that he wants a foul. Forget about it to play, Leron. He did a great job this play. It's back to four, and the crowd back in it. So making you make the extra pass. Trying to get that skip pass through help against that zone. A lot of contact, no foul. Jamison puts it up. A lot of contact on his shot, no whistle. Shot clock does not recycle. It's down to 11. 
Williams trapped at the baseline, somehow got it inside, and here is the foul as Carter puts it up. And Squad are starting to get a little bit more active. See Phil Ford working that sideline. Former player of the year, in the late 70s for Dean Smith. I mean, you just waved that white flag when they went to the four corners, and there was no shot clock with Phil Ford as you watch Carter now going to catch the baseline pass. There he is on the inside. So you have that great aim time to create foul opportunities. Foul was on Morris, his second, and Carter, a 70% free throw shooter at the line. He's the strut as a drum majorette. That's right, he was a drum majorette on the high school level. His stepdad is in charge of the band down there in Daytona Beach, Florida. He's missed the Florida in basketball. Look at this, 10 for 10 on the free throw line at Maryland, 6 for 7. You don't see that too often. No, you don't. That's not Brick City, baby. That's typically in the line. Carter hits them both, 63-57. Kovarik in to run the ball club from the point for Maryland. He and yes, it Davis will play guard for right now. Kovarik was starting here for a while when he benched Stokes after the fourth Washington loss. Profit in the middle of the zone with a miss. In and out. Profit has hit only five out of 14. Nice pass right here. Good look by Koda. Good ball movement. They don't get a shot out of it. Now Williams over a screen by Alkalaji. Yeah, he no traveling music there. Little John Travolta, a little Saturday Night Fever, did a little dance. Shimon Williams has gone from a kid who was not recruited out of high school to such a brilliant outside shooter. He was the MVP of the East Regional last year, the MVP of the ACC tournament. Played brilliantly in the ACC. Yes, it canvases for three. Elliott offensive rebound. In and out. Akizi got a hand on it, then Profit grabbed it, and there will be a foul, I believe, on Okalija. You can't believe the foul called on him. You know, talking about Shaman Williams, Mike, as you mentioned, he went to prep school. That's where he developed, and he had an opportunity at that time. Rick Pitino told me he was very interested in him at Kentucky, but certainly not recruited big time out of high school. Foul on Okalija, his third. <laughs> got it back somehow. Somebody's got to tell him they have a beat inside, and they haven't had an answer for him yet. I'd slide the big fella down to the box and let him get some touches. He hasn't been getting many lately. Right. Got about him. We got away from him. Maryland getting a little sloppy right now. Baseline. Oh, there's a ball, Ted. Keep going with the ball. You got to count that, baby. You know, Maryland, to me, I think the pivotal moment in their season, down 12 here, the Florida State after being blown out, they were blown out and humiliated by Duke. Gary said it was the worst performance he's ever witnessed by his club. They're down 12 and they come back and win that game and then they get the win at NC State. And that really, to me, I think saved their year because they would have probably lost to NC State had they lost to Florida State at home. Showed a lot of character, didn't it? Side for Jai. He's matched up in the middle of that zone with Akizu. Carolina very patient. Williams looking to make that extra pass. That's why you shoot better than 50% of the great favorite. Williams gets it to Coda. Kicks it inside. Basket and the foul. There's a perfect example of unselfish North Carolina basketball. Always looking to make the extra pass to get the high percentage shot. Hey, people, remember these two dates, February 5th and February 28th. Now watch him make the extra pass. He comes right into the traffic, and there's the unselfish play by Coda, and that's what he does so well, and Carter completes the play with his acrobatic baseline ability. And to make Coda. it worse for Maryland, that's four on Abina Akizi, and he'll have to sit down beside Gary Williams again. See, and Gary doesn't want him as an assistant coach. No. He doesn't want him as an assistant big fella. I need you on the floor, Gary said. Carter at the line, the first missed free throw of the night for Carolina. Maktar Jai keeping it alive, but then Maktar Jai will oh, get the foul. Team, watch and he is one inch away from a technical. Be careful, Maktar. He said he was grabbed. That will be four on Maktar Jai. And he was in the face of Steve Gordon and a heartbeat away from being teed up. 7.47 to go in the game. The lead is back to six for the nation's number one team. Center of the Jayhawks average win margin 33 points. Will the Aggies be more fodder? Can the Spurs win in the phone booth? And is this man headed deep in the hard out? Join us, Sports Center, right after the game. 
7.47 to go from jam-packed Cole Fieldhouse, North Carolina, trying to stretch out the lead a little bit. Avino Kesey has to go to the bench with four personal fouls. His counterpart, Maktar Jai, for North Carolina is on the bench. But Akizi far more of an offensive weapon than Jai, so advantage to Carolina. Well, you know, Mike, with 7.47 on the clock, Gary would like to get to at least the five-minute mark where he can bring Akizi back on the floor. But I think he's going to have to play the scoreboard. They can't afford to get down in double figures here against this club, especially the way they shoot free throws when you talk about North Carolina. So he's gone back to the redshirt freshman, Mike. Martisic, that's him right here. He's had a tremendous game. Missed that shot. Jamison with a rebound. He wanted a real great asset to North Carolina. They got guys that can go to that line and stroke it at the end of the game. You don't get too many offensive rebounds against these guys either. They're so active. They move so well. That's the worst that took motion offensively. Williams. Try to bullet pass, and it came right off of Carter. They need Jesse Cavish to throw down a three to get him a little Uncle Mo momentum on his side. Elliott down the lane, got the basket. Contact, no foul, as Maktar Jai close to picking up his fifth. Rodney well, Elliott with that tough move down the lane. Elliott has 13 as they closed within four. Had a big game against Kansas, and then went over to Jayhawks. They're going to a half-court draft. You can pay for this. You can pay for this. Carter, a hanger. Jai with a foul tip. And Maktar Jai at the late pushed off. Maktar's out. That's five on Maktar. They got to go to the bench now. They got six starters they play. They call it a six starting rotation where they rotate the guys. And he's created a situation where he, he rotates a different starting five based on alphabetical order, I guess, is what he utilizes. Yep. Magtar Jai has fouled out of his fourth game this year. That is the 15th foul against North Carolina, five against Maryland. See, now they have really no size at all. That if he gets Obina back in the floor, they can play him on the inside. Yes, a Kavish is tough shot. They needed a big basket out of the fella. Yes, a Kavish is with that nice touch. Now they're going to go to a little half court trap again. Two point game. Jamon Williams to Cotto. Foul. See, you let people open, Mike. You go to that trap, you leave people open, and Carolina's too small, too well drilled, and too talented. Shimon Williams was recruited as a point guard. Of course, Coda is a brilliant point guard, and with them handling the ball, they can really do some damage. See, they're going to try to take you in a trapping area. Now, watch this right here. Freeze it. See, right? Freeze it. Right here. They're trying to get you into a trapping area on the sideline, and now they're, gonna, they're trying to... Little turnover problem. <laughs> Little turnover problem with the telestrating. Coda makes it a three-point play. 68-63. Carolina's had an answer for everything Maryland has done so far. Got to stay away from the traps against them. You can't double up against Maryland. Boy, Martisich with a great pass to Elliott, and he hit the basket. But I'll tell you what, a play by Elliott. He's made two sensational plays here late in the game to catch that ball down here, the diagonal pass, and to convert with the defense hanging all over. Great play by Rodney Elliott. We're going to watch right now the entry. There's Martisic driving it down the diagonal pass. The defense is all over him, and the ball is right there, but yet he converts. The foul was on Okalija, his fourth. Elliott trying to get a three-point play. He's got it. Now it's a problem. Okalaja goes out. Now they got to reach to that bench. This crowd is up and alive. I got to tell you, I've been so impressed by Martisic. Knocked out of bounds, and it will be out to North Carolina. Rodney Elliott says, nice call to Rick Hartzell. He's staying with that half court trap. This crowd is really juiced up. They are pumped up big time, baby. This is college basketball on a collegiate level at its best. Enthusiasm, excitement, and energy. Under six minutes to go. Is that zone now? Block playing on the top of the zone. This is play head to head in certain areas. Match up on the shooters. Okalaja tries a three. Air ball. North Carolina's got a fine part of six. Right inside, they're going deep against Okalaja. Rim down. See, not only is he trying to look for a shot, but when he touches the ball inside, he finds people. Jamon Williams goes baseline. That shot blocked by Yesa Kavis. Just a 
caught him for the foul, and he thought he had all ball. Referees not wavering. Yes, it can. I haven't met a player yet that's committed a foul. And I'll tell you this, with Javon Williams, he's automatic on the line. He has the little head fake. Oh, it doesn't look a little ticky-tacky there. Looks like it was ball, didn't it? Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. Put it down now, Mike. Put it down in your book. He's automatic. He's made 28 in a row, right, in the ACC? 89.1% of the best free throw shooters in the country. He and Langdon are like automatic on a free throw line. And they don't bother to touch the rim on the way through. It's NBA, nothing but nylon. And Shaman has got that great smile. Kovarik goes out, Stokes is back in. The lead is grown to three. Hasn't had a big game. He's got seven assists, though. But he's automatic late in the game. He's a clutch player. ACC player of the year last year during the tournament. Man to man, North Carolina. Head to head. Martis at 15. Hey, you're seeing another player develop as a big time. I know you love his performance, and I don't blame you, Mike. He's got eight points, five rebounds, and three assists, and he's played some tremendous defense. See, where they've won the battle, Williams knocked out to Maryland. It's got them in a situation challenging North Carolina. They have dominated, if you combine the performances of Obina and Martinson. In the lane, they have won the battle. And Elliott. And Elliott as well. Chance to tie or take the lead. Madison wants the ball again. Let's get dropped. As it blocked the foul on Jameson. Moffitt did a great job sealing off for that opportunity in the post there. Moffitt will go to the line the last three games from the charity strike. He's hit 83.3%. Freeze it right here. We're going to watch Profit trying to get post position and wheel to the lane. And then he's going to wheel to the lane right here. Moffitt's going to catch it. There he's going to take it to the lane. A little isolation, a little one-on-one -on -one going to Profit. 11 points tonight for Laron Profit. It's the first one. He averages 15-9. He's the leading scorer on this team just ahead of Rodney Elliott. Got to make free throws. I'll tell you that. Late in the game, you got to make free throws. Well, either we're wrong on a statistic or Mac Jai thinks it's the NBA because he's back in the game. We got one, yeah, we only have four. They give us the wrong information here. Then we got four, Mike. They gave us the wrong data, baby. We are tied at 70. Coda lost it. See, I would bring in, I would bring in Obina now. I would bring him in. There's the lob over the top. Bad pass by the Essekavis is too strong and off the glass. Jameson, a Carter, what a shot. It's Carter with that great acrobatic ability, a little slide and glide on a baseline. So explosive. Vince Carter has 14, so Maryland. You open up the board against North Carolina, they're going to make you pay big time. You open up seams and gaps and get into transition. They what a really range tough. of emotion the last couple of possessions where Maryland came down with a chance to take a lead, threw it away. Carolina makes him pay at the other end. Now he's really waiting there with Obina. There's Martisic again. And the reason because Martisic is playing so well and able to steal minutes. Shot clock at 13. Yes, it canvases for three. In and out. Got the shot they wanted. He's been on fire. He's made 101 in his career coming into this game. Fifth best in the history of the school. The lead is two. That's the shot they wanted by great execution. Oh, and he got it halfway down, too. Just didn't go down for him. They're really bumping and bruising Jamison inside. I mean, they're bugging him everywhere he goes. Carter kicks it back outside. Coda with a runner. Jamison kept it alive. Coda goes after the rebound. 319 and counting. And it's a good one, baby. And remember, we're looking at number one. We're looking at 17 and six. The lob, Martisic may have gotten the fingertip on it and kept Carter from making the bucket. Well, he telegraphed that pass right there. It was telegraphed by Coda. Yes, the canvas just nearly threw it away. Good save by Stokes. And spread the court. A little isolation. Elliott, 17 footer. Maryland's gone cold. Carter with a rebound, and he's fouled. 
Yes, the Cabbages with the frustration makes the foul. They get the two shots they want. They get the shot out of Yes, the Cabbages. They execute. They get the shot out of Elliott up at top of the circle, and neither one goes down. Well, the frustration of coaching. Everything works the way you drew it up, except the ball won't go in the hole. And that puts a lot of coaches on the unemployment line. That puts them into a TV booth where you go undefeated. Carter will go to the line. He's four out of five tonight. The team, 14 out of 15. Ball knocked away from McKeesey by Jamison. They got two great road wins ready, beating Florida State and Florida State and winning at Clemson. North Carolina. It is a two-point game with 2.48 left to go from Cole Fieldhouse. When we spread the wheels out a bit, moved the windshield forward a tad, lowered the step-up height a skosh, and widened the aisle a smidgen, we created a caravan with 32 more cubic feet of room. It's remarkable what a few alterations will do. Number one, North Carolina by a bucket with 2.48 to go in the ballgame here in College Park. Here's the game summary. Maryland shooting nearly 50%. North Carolina shooting nearly 60. Free throws. They've only missed three combined. Maryland's bench with the advantage. And even though Antoine Jamison has gone the last 10-47 without a bucket, it's just another night at the office. 26 points. He said 10 out of 14 from the floor. Well, the zone helps to neutralize and keep the ball away from Jamison. Remember this, Mike. Well, that's got to be good news for everybody. You've neutralized him, and he's yeah, got 26. 26. I tell you, try to neutralize him in spurts. You're not going to stop right. him. You're going to hope to contain him, as Dan Patrick would say, but you're not going to stop a guy like James. Elliott with the oh! puts it in. Now, they set that play up on the timeout. Yeah, but that's the second time that's worked. They did that in the first half. Back screen, the Morris with a great elevation. Matt Tarjai runs into a Keezy, and a Keezy pick up his fifth and that is big if this game were to go to OT overtime that's a big major loss for Maryland there's the bump inside Mactar catches it a little contact and they get the foul on he's at number five freeze it right here. freeze it See, now right here's the back screen. He's going to come across that back screen. There's the keys. He lay the screen. There's the catch, and there's the jam along the baseline. Terrence Morris with that great, great lift. Super hand for Amina Akizi. And he deserved it. 16 points, four rebounds. Spent a lot of time on the bench in foul trouble. Hey, remember, Maryland's had success against North Carolina when they were number one. We pointed out earlier, Mike, they beat him in 1986 with Lenny Bias, the first loss ever in the Dean goal, and beat him in 1995 with Jamin Joe Smith going big when Carolina was number one. Matt Tarjai has hit both of his free throws tonight. He'll get another. Nine points, four rebounds for the 6'10 senior. He had a professor. Like I said earlier, he gave a C to his team. So we're only getting a C. We've got a lot of areas to improve. As a back guard, I don't want to be in your class, baby. Free throw's really nice. Got that nice stroke on a free throw line. Very confident. Well, he points at us. Why is he pointing at us? So that's for us. <laughs> 220 and counting. Big possession right now by Maryland. Big possession. Artists getting a lot of touches inside. Boy, they had him for a second and missed him. Now they got it to Stokes wide open. Nice pass by Elliott. What a super job of executing, Mike, to get the open shot. They did a great job breaking down the defense with some ball movement and player movement. When you get ball movement and player movement, you'll get the high percentage shot. Look at Billy Hahn and Gary Williams working that sideline. This game has been tied six times. The lead has changed 12 times. Now he goes to defense, and he brings Morris in to play at the top of the pressure and then to rotate to the zone. Tie game, 2.06 left. 17 and six, number one in America. Carolina on, on the road, baby. Trying to stay on top. Reach in, foul on 
Elliott as Shimon Williams was trying to get by him. That's four on Rodney Elliott. See, not a good play. 30 feet from the basket, making contact on maybe one of the premier, not maybe, on one of the premier free throw shooters in the United States. Like automatic. How many in a row does he have now, Mike? Well, let's see. He's hit two tonight, and Shimon Williams closing in on Jeff Lee's net. Now has 28. Jeff Lebo still has the school record of 41. Wow. And you put him on a line 30 feet away from the basket, an experienced player. That's a no no. You, can't win. you don't win close games when you do that. Andre Patillo steps in and stops Williams in the middle of his shooting motion. I don't know that I've ever seen that. I get frustrated, kid. Let's see how he handles that. I'd step away from that line. That sure surprised him. Yeah. I wanted to try the ball off perspiration. And I would step away. Well, Shimon knows what to do on that line. What they were doing, it's the tenth foul, so they're telling him it's a two-shot foul and not one and one. Jeff Lebo down at South Carolina, assistant to Eddie Fogler. Last night, a brilliant performance by Kentucky. But here is Mr. Williams. He's like automatic on the line. I was watching him in practice. Is this one? 11 points for Shimon Williams to lead back to two for the Tar Heels. Good possession right there. That was a no-no. Bad play on Maryland's ball. Yes, the Cavs forced a shot from the lane. Terrible decision by Yesica. Well, two bad plays. Bad shot selection in that possession and a bad defensive decision on the other end. And here's North Carolina trying to show their poise and command and why they are the number one team in America. And Dick, historically, this is the situation where they bury you. After you've made a mistake late in a critical game, somebody will do something spectacular and put you away. That's why they've been one of the best, right. best programs over the years. Coda to Ikeologic. Shot clock now at three. Jamison with a 25 back clock. What a defensive play by the Terps. Great defensive play to get a deflection. Get a 20-second timeout by the Terps. Gary Williams wants to talk strategy with 108 to go. That's why Jamison, because he's such a superb player, draws so much attention. Watch number 33. They beat him to the ball right here. Now he's going to try to post. Now he's going to flash open. He's open for a second, and there's the rotation and a deflection by Profit. LaRon Profit got a piece of that. Two big blocks tonight for him. Hey, partner, I'll tell you one thing. February 5th, do you think that place will be hopping? That'll be the Mecca, the basketball capital of the world when the Dukies walk in eight miles down the road and arrive in Chapel Hill to take on North Carolina. Tell you what, it's been a pretty good atmosphere here tonight. 14-6 oh. on their feet most of the time. Tar Heels by two, number one on the line. Stay in two, baby. This baby's going down to the last possession. Spread in the court. I'd like to get Yesen Cavities a look at the goal and see what Carolina's trying to match up on a result. Here's Elliott from 19. Air ball, but the follow by Morissette. I'll tell you, alert, active, and Morissette's really making his presence known. The big guy, quality minutes. This is a breakout game for that freshman. He has been brilliant. There's about a 10-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Yeah, they get the ball back, Maryland. They got to come up with a big stop here. Shalon Williams in a gap is a guy that you got to watch. It's certainly Jamison on the inside. 11 on the shot clock. Shalon, a dangerous shooter at clutch time. Carter. Too strong. Carolina comes out with a loose ball. Fight for it in the corner. Knock out of back to Maryland with seven and a half seconds left. That's an eternity, seven seconds. This crowd is erupting as he gets a big shot. Bodies flying everywhere. Can it happen for the third time? Can they beat North Carolina when they're number one in America? They beat them in 86 and 95 when they were number one. Timeout, seven and a half seconds to go. It's time. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by DiGiorno Rising Crust Pizza. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. And by the new Dodge. It's about change. Well, on the scale of AC.
SEC. <laughs> This one gets an A. I'll tell you, A plus, Micah. Remember this. Leron Profit, he made a big shot. Look at this now. Isn't it fitting that a game like this, there's the All American. They're diving, they're scrapping. They're going to make the All Madden team as they dive on the floor. Ball goes out. Maryland gets it. Remember this. Profit beat Wake Forest at the buzzer last year with an unbelievable jumper on the road at the buzzer. When they were number two in the country. That's right. Now, Carolina, Carolina trying to press, take some time off the clock. You're stuck. You don't want to foul right now. Let's see who's the hands are getting into. Yes, the cabbage looks like the guy. Yes, the cabbage with a bad shot. Going OT. Yes, the cabbage just thought he was fouled. No whistle. And triple zeros on the clock. Gary Williams really upset. And Let's take a look at a replay and see if we can tell. And remember this so Bean is out of the game, Mike, going to the overtime. Here's Yes, the cabbage trying to draw contact. I nah. didn't see any foul. No foul there. Nah, no he foul. just threw it away. Yeah, they lost. Did not get the good possession. No, he's pleading. He's pleading. They can't understand him, though. He's a Lithuanian. They don't know what he's saying. He's pleading and pleading. Now, what Great. they can't understand is that nobody bumped into him, and he tossed the ball out of bounds at the buzzer. Wow. We'll be back for an extra five minutes right after this. Let's stay here all night, Mike. Let's stay here all night. Tied at 76, five minutes on the clock, free basketball coming your way from Cole Fieldhouse. Get an extra timeout now, going to the OT. Remember this, Maryland right now is 0-2 in overtime. Lost to South Carolina and lost to Clemson in overtime. Do they take now the third one and get a 0 for 3 and get the fastball, the curve, and a slider? Gary Williams against Carolina when they were number one is one and two. He won it in 95, lost the other two. I tell you what, against the number one team, that's not a bad record. Not bad. Lefty beat him when they were number one in 1980. As we said, 86 with Lenny Bias. Shimon Williams. Nice head fake. Got it to Jameson. That ball may have been partially tipped and taken by Elliott. Can't believe the contact on the basketball was a deflection. Artisic really sits well in the post. He's learned how to spread his body. See how he ducked in? I tell you, this kid is going to be a star. Yeah, he's going to be a special player, Mike. He's really getting the confidence. Very active inside. He was a red shirt last year. Remember the name, people. Artisic. He has Martisic. tied his career high with 12 points and given Maryland the lead. And what won't show up in the stats, he's been terrific on defense. And he's passed the ball exceptionally well. Yes, he has. It's a three, and North Carolina's regained the lead. Shimon Williams with a dead eye. Doesn't shock me at all. He's a big game player. He makes big, big shots, Shimon Williams. Williams has 14. Elliott down low against Okalaja. Forced it and missed it. Bartison does a great job of what we call a ducking move to get into the lane. We're going to watch him on the inside right here as he's going to stay the screen. Freeze it. See, right here. He gets into this lane area. Once he gets in that area there, he's now very effective. There he is catching the ball into the lane. And there's the little jump shot. Foul is going to be, I believe, called on Rodney Elliott. And if it is, that's his fifth. He and Akizi both gone. Two of their three leading scorers, their top two rebounders. And two guys very active here tonight. Really tough to win in overtime when you play shorthanded against a quality club that you said so well earlier takes advantage of any opportunity you give them. They send Terrence Morris, the freshman from Frederick, Maryland, back on the floor. He's played very well today off the bench. Yeah, he's had some really big moments here in this game. Okalija, the poorest free throw shooter of the starters better than 70 percent as a team North Carolina he is two for two tonight however the lead back to two he can make it three with us they take everybody's best hit everybody plays on another they? level when they see that Carolina blue ah. missed the second one the rebound of Morris they got to get a big play out of yes and cabbages for a profit they got to come up big for him Martisic wants the ball in deep having a game of his life. I don't blame him. Stokes has really played well. And yes, he operating has. Operating up on top, not turning the ball over. Oh, nice, nice pass. Mark gets it. Nice. Nice. Just for the pass to Morris. Great pass. And certainly Mr. Morris knows how to finish it with a little slam jam. Bam. Oh, what a dandy one we got here. Let's Tied play it. at 80. Carter lost it on the way up. 
Here they come. Forearm one. They got forearm one. Stokes pulls it out. Wow, we couldn't see it. Everybody standing in front of us, Mike. You know, it's probably a pretty good decision. He was not in a good position to make a play after he got the pass. Well, initially, I saw the first phase. It looked like four on one, and then yeah. our vision was blocked in. As shot Marcy. clock at 15, nearly a steal. Trying to use the shot clock, playing short-handed without Elliott and without Mr. Akizi. Profit down the lane. Tight shot by the Rosen. I tell you, he's played well tonight. He's had some good spurts. Something exactly. he didn't have against Duke. That was the word I was going to use. He's played well in spurts. 20 second timeout by Bill Guthridge, who's my midseason coach of the year. But a brilliant job he's done in replacing the legendary Hall of Famer, Dean Smith. 2.46 to go in the game. Maryland now up by two. I tell you, I'm so pumped up. I feel so alive here tonight, Mike. There's Profit. He keeps his balance. He slides. He gets through the gap of the defense, and he converts. Hey, Mike, we get paid for this? Please don't tell my boss we're getting paid for this. Wow. Well, that's good news. They might not have no money left for us after those football <laughs> negotiations. That's right. Not a dime. Coming up next, all the sports news of the day, courtesy of ESPN Sports Center. Dan Patrick, Kenny Main standing by. They'll be following the Broncos news of the day and a big signing for the Colorado Rockies. Highlights of the Rangers Devils. That's Sports Center. Coming up right after our broadcast. We might be here for a while. Yeah, hey, Kenny and Dan, relax. Get in front of the tube. Quinn and Carl, all of you, we're staying here all night. What's the record for overtime? <laughs> As Morris up on top of that zone with the long arms. And the zone's been a key. There's a backdoor lob to Carter. Nice pass by Coda. I'll tell you, that play it's works so well against the zone. Oh, you sneak behind the baseline, and you got people that can execute Coda's vision and the great jumping ability of Carter. Tied at 82. Sherman Dudley should throw that pass well for Syracuse. Profit down the lane, lost it on the way up, and they bail him out with a foul. This is the kind of game, if you're Maryland, psychologically, you need so badly. You've come close several times. You've got to get the big win here. You've lost several overtime games. We're going to see the alley-oop over on top. See right here. Look at this. Look at this. Is he above the rim? I mean, is that an elevator man? Is that the up, up, and away? Is that a Skywalker? Jam City. Profit gets the roll on the first one. Came out of Delaware, was an outstanding high school player. Competed against the combination from Xavier, Lumpkin and Brown, who came from Delaware. He's hit all three from the line. 16 points tonight for LaRon Profit, who averages 15-9. You tell us, I'm going to have a good game tonight. You're not going to see that 0-7 that you saw against Duke. Well, he's been right. He's had some wonderful moments. Maryland now with a two-point lead, 2-11 to go, and shall we say the first overtime. Look. If you joined us late, you have missed the beauty. Maryland on top of North Carolina, 84-82. 2-11 to go in overtime. You notice, Mike, they can't get a lot of touches down. Juan Jamison, that defense shading them and really doing a great job trying to keep the ball away from him. He's such a brilliant performer. America's, I believe, finest. Maryland playing in overtime without Elliott, without Akizu. They have both fouled out of the game. Let's see if they go zone or go man-to-man. Back in the man-to-man, -man. they got Martinson playing against Jamison. I'd go to Jamison. I'd go to Jamison. I bring it against Kavari. I bring it to Jamison. I let him get a touch inside somehow. Shot clock at 11. They got it to him. It's going to be a reach-around foul on Martinson. They really mug him inside. They really do. I think when you're a star, you got to really pay a price. They say stars are supposed to get away with it. This kid's not getting away with it. See, it's going to try to drop step, get post position inside. He's going to try to lock right here. Now he's working. They're trying to set up. You got to have ball, you man. You got to see the ball. See the drop step? And they get the bump. Jameson can tie it. Missed the first. He has not scored in 17 minutes in this ball game. Could be a little fatigued from the kind of bump that he's been taking. Rotating a lot of people around him. Constantly making contact with him. Jameson missed them both. Martisic with a rebound. Big, big miss there. That's so rare for North Carolina late in the game. Seven rebounds for Martisic. 
Got to take some time off that clock now and get the high percentage shot. So use the clock. That's smart. Bring it back out. He's, a, he's an experienced player right here, Stokes. Shot clock at 10. Got to walk. Got to travel right there. Oh, to get a foul before the travel? That's a big break for Maryland. Big time break. Big time break. Let's take a look right here. That's the kick out. Ooh, wow. What do you think, Mr. Patrick? I don't think so. The foul on Okalija is his fifth. So Bill Guthridge will lose him. And Morris will go to the line. His first trip tonight, he's a 71.9% free throw shooter. And are these huge or what? I'll tell you, he has stepped up. He and Martisic, two freshmen, have really stepped up and made some big-time plays. But you're right. They're not too many bigger than this moment right here. Look at the fight. It's almost like a tennis match now. Right now, the guy's going to punt. Oh, look at that big rebound. Another no-no for North Carolina. Carter was sleeping on the lane, and he comes in and gets the rebound, Mike. Yes, the canvas just trying to make up for a couple of earlier mistakes, and that's the way to do it. And a man right now by North Carolina. Taking some time off the clock. They want, Martisic wants the ball down low against Jai. Nice pass to Morris. Is it a foul? We're continually blocked by the people who are standing up. If it's back to Jai, he's gone. We thought he had five a little bit earlier. We're missing four, but there's Jai's fifth right now. He's got five or six now, Dick. <laughs> Bill Guthridge has got to reach into that bench. He's going to go with Brendan Haywood. We're going to see him, Martisic, down inside. They get the contact, reaching in with the right arm on Jai. Haywood coming in. And Morris, you'll remember, was just back at the line, and he missed the front end of two shots. And he missed badly on yeah. that shot as well. Haywood now, they're trying to get him into the rotation. They're hoping that that seven-footer could become a guy that can get some minutes to rest some of these people. Because as the season progresses, it could become a problem when you talk about the team factor against the quality of competition they're going to be playing. North Carolina wants a timeout under a minute to go in the ball game. Maryland by two. The Terps have a chance to add to that lead from the free throw line. We'll be back with the last 50.6 from Cold Field House after this. 50.6 seconds left to go in the ball game with Maryland leading North Carolina, number one North Carolina. 84-82, the Terps will go to the free throw line. Antoine Jamison has been going through a very tough spell here. 26 points, but he hasn't scored since the 13-35 mark. Dickey's picked up a lot of bruises, but no points. Well, they've really banged them. They've really played physical with them and not allowing them to touch the basketball. Some smart strategy by Gary Williams and his club. you got to keep the ball away from a guy like Jamison because he can just blow you out with his explosiveness on the inside. Morris missed an earlier try, misses this one. These are huge free throws. Well, that's a big miss now because it remains a one-possession game. Even if he converts this, you're still in a one-possession battle. He makes both. You're looking at two possessions. All free throws from now on, two shots. Hits the second one. It's a three-point lead. Well, you got a three-point lead, another timeout, and now you got to find the three-point shooters, especially you got to find Shaman Williams. Coda has proven he can take the outside shot and hit it. Well, he's Vince made Carter shooting nearly 44% from outside. Well, you know, Mike, right now with 50 seconds on a clock, you don't have to think exclusively the three. You can get the ball inside and get a layup. You get that layup. Let's take a look at the ACC standings. Really, if Maryland can't pull this one off tonight, it's basically becoming a two-team race with the number one and number two teams in the country. And Florida State has certainly fallen to the cellar of the ACC in a hurry. Well, they've lost three in a row now, and now you're going to see a little gut check in time and see what those kids are made of if they can respond after some adversity. And they've lost the quality teams. Duke wins tonight. Again, a huge win as they were at Wake Forest. Our situation here, 50.6 seconds to go. 
Maryland leads by three. You see the timeout situation left. North Carolina only one chance to stop the clock. They have a 20 remaining. I'll tell you one thing. When you talk about Maryland tonight on your home turf, these are the kind of games you have to win if you want to be a legitimate top 15 basketball team. You can't consistently play people close like Clemson in South Carolina and walk to the locker room and get handshakes and say great effort. This would definitely put Maryland back in the national rankings and draw them actually within one game of North Carolina in the ACC standings if they can hang on. Well, having a win over North Carolina and Kansas on your resume certainly shows you can play against people up there at the front top. This Martisich kid has been so big here tonight. Going to extend defensively, make him take some time off the clock. This guy can beat you off the dribble and create an open shot. Jameson being played right now. And Marlis for the three. Air ball. And the ball out to Maryland as Jesse Cavish just got the ball and called timeout before he fell out of bounds. Well, you got to hand it to Yessa Cavish. He, yes, he made play. three plays in a row that really hurt his ball club, but down the stretch here, he has made two brilliant plays. Well, he made the brilliant play on the lane. That was a big one when he came with that rebound on a missed free throw. Gonna watch right here, Coda with the wide open jumper. Bricks that one right there. And here's Yessa Cavish making the catch and getting the timeout before he falls out of bounds. Andre Padillo with the ball. Officials done a good job on a tough situation. I mean, right now, Maryland knows they're going to go to the free throw line. You've got to convert here. You convert, you put it out of reach almost. It's never, though, really out of reach for North Carolina. But right now, you've got to go looking uh, either for Terrence Morris, who has missed two out of three, or how about this? You go looking for Matt Kovarik, who has only been to the line 12 times this year. He's only made three. He's a good shooter, Dick. Yep, but your bottom line is you don't get a lot of playing time, and you're out there, you're not warm, and he's got to be thinking psychologically. You're three for 12, 25%. That's going to weigh on your mind, knowing that there's a possibility you're going to go to that line. But the key is you got to make sure that he's touching the basketball. You don't want any intentional fouls, two shots of the ball. And when you're 15 feet away, it looks a lot farther when you're three out of 12. <laughs> Alvina Akizi and Rodney Elliott have, Elliott have fouled out for Maryland. Maktar Jai has fouled out for North Carolina, along with Adam Ola Okalaja. A lot of the big guys are spectators. Defensive game plan by Gary Williams rotating to the zone has done a good job controlling and containing, as Dan Patrick would say, containing Mr. Jamison. Not stopping him. You're not going to stop him. He's got his 26, but as you said, has not scored for a long, long time. Maryland out of timeouts. Carolina trying to go to a face guard pressure and make the steal. What a great play. Coda missed the shot, however, and Martisich wraps up the rebound and he's fouled. Wow, they make the steal on a face guarding of the inbounds play and don't convert. Normally they convert in that situation. And oh, Coda, they count. Now here's the watch the lob. They're going to throw the lob. They face guard. He's like a center fielder and he makes the steal. A terrible pass by Ron Croft. You had to wonder what he's thinking. Yeah, just threw that on the floor. Up for grabs. Well, wow. look at the Maryland bench. A lot of tension on that sideline. They know this could be a big, big moment. So does this guy. Martisich is two for two from the line. If he hits a free throw, he has a career high in an exceptional game for this red shirt freshman. And if he hits a free throw, he makes it two possessions now needed by North Carolina. Not close on that one. This is the big one right here. Foul, by the way, was on Vince Carter, his third. Bringing in Haywood for some size on the lane. This is the big one, Mike. This is it, baby. This could put a lot of emotion right here into the scrap. Plenty of time, though, with 29-9 for North Carolina. Missed it again. Maryland has hit only two of its last six free throws with a chance to ice this game. How many times can you open the door against North Carolina and get to the winner's circle? Shaman Williams misses the three. Profit with a rebound, and he's fouled. I mean, they've opened it. seconds to go. They've opened the door, Maryland. On a free throw line, they've really opened the door for North Carolina, but very, you know, it's very rare that they don't capitalize in those situations, North Carolina. 
We've come to expect it, Dick, at the end of the game. Exactly. You hit that right. Expectation. You almost expect them to make the miraculous play. And so does the team they're playing. That's the interesting thing. Exactly. You make a mistake and you go, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here we go. It's going back. We'll go to the locker room with another moral victory. Profit with a chance again to make it a two-possession game. And he got it. We got that one, no doubt about it either. Got it with a lot of confidence. They're starting to dance. They're starting to dance and party down at Bentley's on Route 1, baby. And the crowd here is starting to dance. 86-82, a chance to beat number one. They better not start that chant. It's all over. They better not start chanting that. You don't want to start chanting that overrated nonsense behind us. a timeout with 14-4 to go in the game. Can I gotta tell you what, here's where you and I differ on strategy at the end of a game. To me, you always are going to end up with your best free throw shooter at the line. If you don't come down and hit a three, and they come down and hit two free throws, it's a two-possession game again, and then you're really dead beat. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying, but I would think right now, you get that quick deuce and then lock up on the other end defensively and try to make the steal, you still got a shot. The bottom line is you need a combination of five points. Whether you get the deuce first or the three, the bottom line is you got to score in this possession. You've got to put some points on the board, but I do understand you're a mathematical. Well, that's why I think you need six points, and that's why I think you need two threes. But so you can't, it, yeah, I don't think you can, or maybe even the tie. You can't count on the other team Listen. to brick two free throws again. You're hoping and praying for that miracle. It does happen, though, as we've seen it happen here tonight. Absolutely. It's 87-82, 14.4 seconds to go. North Carolina, of course, with some outstanding three-point shooters. What do you do defensively here as a coach? What do you like them to do? Extend? Well, I would like to extend and make them take some time off the clock, but you don't want to foul because you don't want to stop that clock. Right now, the clock is, you want that on your side, baby. You don't want that clock going against you. As you take a look here, three-point shooting tonight. They've done a great job, I think, Maryland, also containing Shaman Williams, not giving him a lot of great looks because he's such an excellent shooter. And very difficult to do it when you're in the zone. I mean, the exactly. zone shut down the inside game, but somehow they also paid a lot of attention to Shaman Williams and Vince Carter, for that matter. And that's the key. Paying attention in your scouting reports, understanding who's the strong shooter. Carolina has to hurry. See, they're taking time off. Good defense right here. Taking some time. Oh, he got hit. James got hit. Hits the three and Silly. Unbelievable. Silly. Yes, a Cavish just commits the personal as Jamison is silly. desperately putting up a three. Yes, silly play right Holy there. Holy Petty, experienced cow. player. That'll make you lose your hair. Gary will get a little ball dome like mine. No, he's got all his hair up there. Just gets a little grayer. He turned around and says, how can you do this? Take a look right here. He's behind the arc. And you go up to challenge him up there with seven ticks on the clock. Oh, that is a pointless play by Yessa Kavish. Even if he gets the block, is it worth the risk? Obviously not. Exactly. And it's the first point for Jamison in a long, long time. Has not scored since that 13 minute mark. He missed that one. He gets three because he was behind the line. Got to make this one. This is a must for North Carolina. And they're going to somehow come up with a steal on the inbound. Missed oh, the big. second one. Stokes is fouled with 4.4 seconds to go. Antoine Jameson could have made it a two-point game if he makes both free throws. Then you can afford to commit the foul. But it's over now. I think it's really a situation, a little fatigue as well for Jamison. I really believe that, Mike. Playing a lot of minutes, playing under pressure, getting a lot of contact on him all night long. Hey, they're warming up the bus, baby. Maryland has sprung the upset. Now, you can no tell, doubt Jam about it. You're right. You can tell Jamison is exhausted. He hit one out of five free throws in overtime. Stokes goes to the line for the first time tonight. It's not on Juan Jamison, I'll tell you that. What a great win for the kids at Maryland. They've been plugging all year. We're humiliated here. We're absolutely humiliated by Duke. 
yet they respond in a challenge against Florida State. They go on a road to beat NC State, and now they show why in the preseason they were rated top 20 in all the polls. And this will put Duke in the first place in the ACC, and will put Maryland only one game behind North Carolina. And still, I don't get it. They lose this game, but North Carolina, to me, is still one of America's top three basketball teams. Absolutely. And I'd be shocked if they fell anywhere beyond third. Well, we're looking at Bill Guthridge getting his first feeling of walking to a press conference and to a locker room, winning out. But he had the winning with a class, and he's certainly, he's certainly going to have the losing with a class. Look at Stokes. What's he driving to Stokes? What's he want from me, baby? No. He played well, man. He's done. He's driving me nuts here, Mike. Why the hit me over the head? Oh. <laughs> years ago, oh. Carolina came in here number one. Maryland knocked them off. They do it again in stunning fashion. 89-83 in overtime. Gary Williams, what a great moment, Mike. Great time. Coming up next, Sports Center, Dan Patrick and Kenny Maine. Some of the top stories they'll cover. The Broncos news of the day, a big signing for the Colorado Rockies. For Dick Vitale and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. We wish you a good night from College Park, Maryland. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Center is next. Good night, everybody.